Hi guys, Rose here with The Cackling Moon. This is going to be a client's planetary awareness reading. Um, for the reading, I'm gonna be working with three different decks where I pull from three different decks, as well as having the visual with the Arcana Astrology deck. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull those cards that I'm gonna need. So we are going to need planets, so Uranus, Mercury, Mars, and Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, the Sun, Earth, and Neptune. Um, it is, let me see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 um, areas of yourself that we're going to be talking about and we'll be pulling from different decks. So, um, I already have it laid out here how I'm going to do this. I have the tarot deck I'm going to be working with is the um, gorgeous Vertigo Tarot. And I'm going to be pulling from the Flowers of the Dead Oracle. I really, really, really love this deck. Um, I was pulling stuff from it last night. And I just really wanted to use it for your reading today. Because it's so honest and truthful. And I feel like that's what you need. And then I'm also going to be pulling from the Universal Mind. And I'm going to get my Mermaid deck. Because um, I like to use that one. This one, this deck has so many title cards and stuff. <laughs> um, I like to pull from the mermaid deck for the Neptune position. So let me go get my mermaid deck. Hang on one second. So for the Neptune position, I like to use the Oracle of Mermaids. All right, so I have my spread right here. Um, let me kind of move this over so that it's not in the way. There we go. <laughs> and I'm gonna just go ahead and start shuffling. Now, you, for your reading, you had the question of love. You wanted to Kind of just see if love was in the future, if love is in the cards for you. Um, so we'll see if, you know, those messages come forward. We're going to be having a, when, when we pull for Venus, we're going to pull for love. So, you know, we'll get your, we'll get your answer for that there. I just absolutely love shuffling the Vertigo Tarot. The cardstock is so thin on this deck, and <laughs> it's just so easy to shuffle. It just feels like money in my hands. So that's ready to go. I was feeling a very more like a dark vibe for you, not saying that you're evil or I was feeling evil or negativity. I'm not, I don't mean it that way. But like a dark vibe is in the decks that I wanted to use for your reading. I was feeling more of a, um, just a dark, the shadowy figure, the, the shadowy vibe. So I was really attracted to the vertical tarot for you. And um, I think it's just you need kind of like in your face advice. Um advice that you would get from a friend that <laughs> tells it like it is. And then I pulled the Universal Mind Oracle because this one's very whimsical, but it's also very honest. Um, whenever I pull for myself with this deck, it really just highlights what I need to hear at that moment. So I felt like this would be necessary for you as well. Oh. <laughs> A little hard to shuffle because it's such a big deck 
but it's beautiful. Okay, and then the mermaids. Um, I always pull from the Oracle of Mermaids for the planet Neptune because you've got to. It's such a ocean mermaidy theme. And this is my favorite deck. Okay. So my decks are shuffled and now I'm just going to have them like off to the side here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pulling from them. Um, but it's not like a tarot reading where I pull, you know, it's, it's like we go one by one. That's how, that's how I like to conduct the planetary awareness. So let's put these guys in order. We're going to do the sun, the sun, we need Mercury, Venus. I should have had these already done, but you know, <laughs> sometimes it's nice for you guys to see the, the back, how the, the behind the scenes, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Oh, I don't have Pluto. What happened to Pluto? Oh. You can't forget Pluto. I hope I didn't lose Pluto. Oh no, where did you go? Oh, there you go, hiding of course. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so my client, sit back, get ready. You're going to be going through the galaxies with the gorgeous um, planets to see what's in store for you. Let's begin. So we have the sun and the sun energy is um, all about who you are. So when you're looking at your sun sign, this is talking about your personality. This is talking about you on the outside, you to the core, um, everything radiating about you. This is everything that you will um, express to other people or the way that you act. Um, so we have sun and I'm going to pull from the tarot. We have the five of swords and so bit of a conflict energy right now with you um i feel the five of swords is kind of showing we have this this card in particular we have a sword that's actually going right through the mouth um very graphic but um right through the mouth and i feel right now is now there's two energies that i'm feeling here i feel sometimes you overstep your boundaries and you speak before you think okay and you end up biting your tongue because of it. You end up, I feel like you end up holding in what you want to express to the point where you finally just word vomit all over the place. Um, you know, it's nice to express your feelings and it's nice to express yourself in different ways. But it's an issue if you do so and it harms others or it creates hostility or conflict with others. Um, and I feel like that's sometimes what happens here with the five of swords popping up. You have disagreements with others. You have people who just, they're not on the same page as you. Differences of opinion, belief systems are different. The way you choose to live your life is different from others. But sometimes it's best for you to not even say anything. Sometimes silence is golden. Not all the time. Sometimes it's good to, to speak up and defend yourself. But sometimes it's also better to not say anything at all. And I feel like that's the message coming forward for you right now in this moment. Um, there might be things that you are in disagreement with. There might be things you, you want to like, you know, go out and vent online. And sometimes it's best to just um, take a step back and not. So I feel like the sword through the mouth is kind of saying it's reminding you, think before you speak. Be wise of what you say. So very heavy. Um... A very heavy way to start your reading with the sun. This is something that you've been battling on and off, but definitely something that's been coming up recently for you. Next, we have Mercury. And Mercury is all about the way you communicate, the way you think, but it's mainly the way you communicate with others. Um, so this is the message from the divine as I have it in my spread. So this, this card is going to be explaining um, the divine, the spirit or 
your goddess or God or whoever you choose to feel this is, this message is from. And we're going to pull from the oracle <clears throat> because I, I have the spread over here and it tells me which oracle or whatever. <laughs> it's, a, it's a spread I created. So the oracle is showing creators of the new earth. Beautiful. Creators of the new earth. The new earth, if you haven't really heard that concept, is the idea that at one point in life... Um, this earth is actually going to be recycled out and we are going to be, um, kind of transported into a new, um, a new place, a new space of living to call home, whether that is like a renewal of this current planet or it's another planet altogether. But the new earth is looked at as, um, a place of peace and freedom where we don't have rules. We don't have government. We don't have all that kind of stuff. That's really like, um, encircling us and, and keeping us, you know, living in more of a, um, <laughs> you got to follow the rules, that kind of lifestyle. Um, and then the creators of the new earth, the creators are the people who create this well-being. Um, and so I feel like the divine is telling you the things that you speak, the things that you connect with, the way that you express yourself, whether if you read or if you, um, give advice to other people, you know, you maybe you have a following and people enjoy the things you say. A lot of what you teach and a lot of what you may connect with coming soon um, will revolve around creating this space, this energetic space to be um, similar to the new earth. It's, it's you, you, you're kind of like a, a leader in that type. Um, those of us who are light workers, those are of us who, you know, myself included, readers, we um, like to share messages that we receive either from the divine or higher our higher self, however you want to see it. Um, and we share healing. We share the ability for people to find, um, you know, inspiration. And I feel like as you, for you, if there's something that you've ever, you know, questioned about your purpose in life, um, kind of focus more towards that sort of thing. Like, being some sort of a light worker or a healer or a spiritual leader. Um, and don't be afraid to express the messages that you receive when you're meditating and that kind of stuff. Start sharing it in your blogs um, because I feel like you're going to start creating that space. Um, Venus. So this is the one that we're going to answer the question that you have about love. Um, Venus, this is the love forecast. So Venus, the planet Venus is all about love, all about sexuality femininity um it's all about beauty and um all of that kind of stuff I think of Aphrodite think she's you know she was a sex symbol she was beauty and fertility and you know creation um so Venus we're gonna pull two cards so let's pull a tarot and let's pull one of these oracles so we have four of cups and the bat transition and unknown four of cups is um to me the cup of hesitation the cup of delay slow motion slow action it's also to me i feel four of cups for you is showing you're very protective of your heart you're very protective of the people you choose to allow in your inner circle people who are potential mates, you're really looking for that special somebody. Um, you will not settle for just anyone and you will not open your heart for just any type of person. It really takes a special someone um, to get you to open up romantically. Um, it isn't easy for you to let the walls down, so I'm getting that feeling too. But you've got to start learning to do that because Four of Cups, is, like I said, it's the energy of procrastination or um, you fail to see what's being offered to you. But when you do that, you are passing up potential opportunities. So I also feel like when it comes to love, taking risks, um, love comes in different forms. It might be someone you least expect. It could be somebody that you may not even think you would ever be attracted to but they will turn around and <laughs> completely woo you. Um, but I feel you have to let your wall down a bit. There needs to that, there needs to be that action to take place before love starts to enter in. And then we have bat. Transition in the unknown. So again, with the unknown, the transition process is a transition of you put, bringing the walls down and, and literally telling the universe, I am ready to let myself be loved and I am ready to let myself be um, in a romantic, a, a romantic relationship. 
once you make that transition in you and you put that intention out to the universe, be open to whoever and, and however that will come across. Um, you know, you got to be social. You got to put yourself out there. Try new things. Go out with friends. You know, smile and and be more aware and observant of people around you because you will easily um, not see or not notice someone is smiling or noticing you. Um, it's easy to pass up opportunities when you're kind of protecting yourself and you have your walls up. You got to let it all down and be free. And I feel like the unknown card, the unknown message of the bat is saying, um, it's like how bats dwell in darkness. I feel like for you, you're going to have to um, trust that the light is at the end of the tunnel for love, but you're not going to be able to see the, the road ahead. It's like you go in blind. Um, and I feel like it takes a lot of trust for you to do that. And it's not easy, which is why you've been so protective of this part of your heart. But if you really want it, you gotta you got to be a little uncomfortable to get it. And so I feel like it's going to be one of your bigger challenges that you're going to be facing. Um, but I also feel like it's going to pay off and it's going to be well worth the wait, well worth the challenge. Um, and I do feel like love is coming for you, but you have to be willing to put your, your piece of energy into it first for you to receive. Um, and I also feel like it's going to come for you in a way that you will least expect it. And it's going to be in the form that you don't re... re you might have like um, a... a well, what's the word I'm trying to use? A superficial idea of the perfect mate for yourself. But this person may look nothing like that. But they're going to be amazing. So love happens in the weirdest ways i mean i had my own superficial idea of the perfect mate and how i wanted them to look but it doesn't always mean i land that you know it doesn't always mean that's what you get so open it up and, and bring your walls down put the intention out that you were ready because the universe right now is looking at you like you're not ready and when you are ready when you say you're ready and you act like it it'll happen next we have earth um, Earth is the future forecast. So, whoops, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Earth energy, <laughs> my uh, poor little camera took a nosedive there. Earth energy um, is all about um, the uh, a little, a little, the present. There we go. It's all about the present. Um, but I have it in my spread as the future forecast. Because um, we could read about the present, but that's basically what the most of this reading is. I want to look in the future. So I always think of Earth energy as present, but let's, let's look at it also as the future. The future forecast for you. And we're going to be pulling two cards. So let's pull from this one and the tarot. Okay. King of Swords for the future. And I am the mantra. You are the king of swords, I feel is what this is saying. I am the king of swords. I am the ruler of my thoughts. I am the ruler of my communication. I am in charge. I am great. I am confident. I am a ruler. I am a leader. Um, king of swords energy, all about that. All about owning who you are and all about owning um, you being a leader in that way. And I feel like this is a different form. This is something alien to you. You're not used to being a leader. You're not used to being in charge. Um, being in charge of your, the way that you communicate, the way that you put yourself out there for other people. And I feel like for this, for the King of Swords, you are. You're shifting into that image. You're shifting into that personality. And I love that. I feel like it's, you growing to the next level, you are shifting, you are changing, you are advancing, and you can't be afraid of it. And I feel like that also goes hand in hand with what we were talking about with the Venus card. You have to be, you have to let your walls down. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid to step up. You can't be afraid to be a leader. You have to really believe in yourself. And I really love that message for you because I think you need it. Um, I feel like you need more of a confidence boost, believing in yourself more and knowing that you are worthy. So let this be that reading that gives you that message because I think that you really needed that. 
Next we have Mars, the beautiful red planet. And Mars energy is the opposite of um, Venus. Mars energy is very masculine and it's very take charge and action oriented. If you follow the tarot cards, it's more of a chariot energy. It's fire, um, it's action, it's full force, it is confidence. So everything that we were just talking about right now with the King of Swords, definitely Mars energy there. So we're gonna look at it as what is blocking that energy to come forward. What is blocking, and I wanna look at it for because you wanna look at love. I'm gonna read it as what is blocking you from bringing the walls down for love and allowing yourself to be loved. So let's see. We're gonna pull from an oracle. Should we pull, let's pull this one. <laughs> Inspiration and study. So it's blocking you with inspiration. I feel like that's kind of saying, um, I feel like with, with, when, when, when we are inspired by something, it's because we are partaking in something that really truly interests us. And I could see that uh, for matters of the heart, what interests you, maybe you block yourself from, from letting that happen. You block your heart from taking action because maybe you were worried about the outcome. Maybe you are more focused on the outcome than you are of the whole journey and the whole process, the whole experience. So that's what I would see with the study card or the inspiration card. The, the, what you are blocked, what, what is blocking you is you're so focused on the outcome than you are with the initial reason why you are opening your heart to love. So let that be something to think about because I feel like that is, um, a big piece. Don't be so focused on the outcome. Be focused on the whole journey. And understand that when you open your heart to love, that you will risk broken hearts. You will risk the things that happen with love if it doesn't go right. But that's everybody. Um, so don't let that be the reason why you don't do it. So it's totally intuitive um, because I'm sure other people could read that differently. But my intuitive interpretation of it is that. So I hope that that spoke to you. I'm feeling very emotional right now, <laughs> so I hope I don't start crying, but um, I feel like I'm very, I'm, I'm really connecting with you, and it's it's almost like an eye-opening, I feel, is your, your, what you're witnessing, and I also feel like you're, you, I wouldn't be surprised if you would start shedding tears, um, because I think that this is a lot more, it goes deeper than just um, the surface, like what we're talking about, it, it goes in a lot deeper with you, so... Oh, okay, let's talk about Jupiter, something more uplifting. So Jupiter is all about careers and forecasts as far as the spread goes. So we're going to look at the career path for you, the money. Um, but also Jupiter is the good luck card, which is why I said it's a little bit more uplifting energy. Jupiter is good luck. It is good fortune. Jupiter will enhance everything it touches. And it's not always a good thing. Sometimes it could be <laughs> Jupiter can enhance um, maybe some not so good emotions, but it also is looked at as a very much a good luck charm. So let's see what Jupiter has for you. We're going to pull two cards. Coyote and Temperance. Ooh, Coyote is cunning and resourceful. And then we have Temperance, but it is also a very resourceful energy. Temperance is very balanced. Temperance is very comfortable with themselves. So if I had to say, if there was an area in your life that is on the good side right now, that is everything is fine, you shouldn't really tweak it too much, I would say it would be your career path, your money, your fortune. You may not be making as much as you want, but understand that you do have enough, okay? And sometimes having enough is better than nothing at all. And I feel like that's what this is. I feel like you shouldn't even touch it or, or tweak with it. I feel like you should just enjoy it and, and keep living it, saving up when you can. But it's very resourceful, very um, balanced, I'm seeing here. So nothing really alarming with the career path. I feel like if anything, this should be a path, you just leave it alone. Don't mess with it just yet. Um, we want to focus more on the heart, your your healing, your heart, your emotions, and the, the relationship aspect of you. So I'm just going to leave that there. Um, Saturn, long-term goals. Saturn is all about your lessons. 
Saturn is the planet that actually puts a halt to things. Um, so if we're talking about the like career and how I said leave it be, it's kind of like Saturn would would say, yeah, it's, it let it, leave it as is. It's good. It's fine. Don't tamper with it. Saturn energy also has transformational. Um, it's kind of like when it's around <laughs> and it's influencing you, you are going through some shifts and changes, but they're big ones. Like when you turn 30 or when you're hitting your 50s, or they're huge landmarks. So it doesn't always influence us all the time, but when it comes around, it's a big, it's a big influence. So we're going to look at it in terms of long-term goals for transformation. And let's pull up an oracle. Ooh, the universal mind. So oh, long-term goals for transformation with the universal mind. I feel like it's saying taking that shift, that initiative to learn more, study. Spirituality is a big one for you. You're expanding your mind. You're expanding your connections with yourself, but also with your... Um, with like the subconscious. It is a path that you're supposed to embark on. I also feel with the pyramid coming up, it's also travel. That's also coming up for me too, for intuitive for you. So if you have plans or desires, maybe it is to see the pyramids or it may be something different like actually traveling. Maybe you have that goal in mind. Maybe it was a minor goal. I wanna say, bring that up to the list. Put it towards the top of your bucket list to travel. I feel like, um, Traveling for you will bring major transformation. I think it's necessary and I think you need it. So definitely with that. I think it'll expand your mind. I feel like you need some time to do that. You need some time to kind of live freely and not have expectations for the next day. You live in the moment. So that's what I'm seeing with Saturn. Okay, let's talk about urina your urina <laughs> Uranus. And this is enhance, uh, what, what you want to enhance about yourself to stand out from the crowd. So Uranus is a very, it's, it's a very rebellious planet. It is the energy of sticking out from the crowd. You don't want to follow the same tune. You really stand out. People notice you. That is what Uranus is all about. He does his own thing. He's going to do it his own way. So what do you need more of or what do you need to enhance about yourself to stand out? What do you, what needs to stand out about you? Um, and that one we're going to pull from a tarot. So we have the Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands is naturally a card of um, you're fighting the obstacles that come your way. You're not letting anything keep you down. You're not letting anything block you. So to enhance about yourself, to stand out, what would that be? It's your willpower. It is your, your drive to accomplish Sticking out, you know, not letting people get to you negative comments people who are just being rude Don't let those things get to you. You kind of like if you if you have that sh that shield over your heart We want to break that down to allow you to invite love in But I feel like you need more of a harder shield around you your aura your sensitivities um because I feel like when people say things, even if they're just disagreeing with you, it gets to you to a point where it's like, it's really hard for you to function because it bothers you so much. Uh, you got to learn to let that stuff go. So I feel like for Neptune or for Uranus energy to enhance yourself to stand out is really like step up, step up and fight and believe not just fight, fight, but like <laughs> stick up for yourself, be willing to challenge the people who challenge you all the time don't let them walk all over you that kind of thing and that goes hand in hand with um the knight of swords that i had pulled earlier or i'm sorry not the knight the king of swords the king of swords is no bullshit he doesn't let people talk to him certain ways he will speak speak up and stand up for himself um all the time that's the kind of energy you need to bring forward um with your seven of wands here for your uranus energy don't let people walk all over you. Neptune. So Neptune is the hidden desires and how to obtain it. These are your dreams. These are the dreams that maybe you have, but you haven't really put much thought into you because maybe you think they're dumb or maybe you think that you are not able to, to complete them. But Neptune energy is also a dream state. It's the Piscean energy. It is the fog that comes over us. We're daydreamers. We tend to get stuck in that daydreamy, whimsical energy, and we don't we forget to take action. So it sometimes can be a little bit of a troublesome energy. 
But for you, let's talk about the hidden desires and how you can obtain these hidden these hidden goals, these hidden desires. And I feel for you, because we're focusing on love for you, we'll look at it in that aspect. Your hidden desires for love and to find love, what can you do to obtain that? So we're pulling from the Mermaid Oracle. Fertility, potential, powerful, creative energy, initiate, initiation energy. Fertility. And then we also have tel telepathy, nonverbal communication, energetic pulses, mind reading. I love that this one came up for you. So we'll talk about fertility after, but let's talk about the telepathy card. All of a sudden, as soon as I saw this one, I had this image of you. Um, you, you have this ability, and I'm going to say it. You have the ability to not read minds, but I feel like you have the ability to just kind of know. You know things, and you don't know where it comes from. You don't know how you know, but you just know. And I feel like with the telepathy card, it's when you just know, you really size yourself up to people. Um, you see the red flags before those red flags even exist. Allow that to help you find love. Trust in yourself and, and how you feel. But also, um, if you kind of sense what someone is thinking or feeling, run with it. You know, you don't have to go and tell them like, oh, I think you're thinking this. Like. If you feel like this person is interested in you and you have that sixth sense, go for it. Don't be afraid to do it. And I love that it's a heart because we're talking about love for you. So I feel like it's that's a big that's a big ability you have that you should tap into more and trust more. The more you trust an ability, the more it happens. The fertility card is to me. I'm thinking of it as creation, um, enhancement for you, letting it grow. I feel like you're um, a late bloomer for love but it's not too late to plant that seed and let it grow. So it's gonna happen. Um, but I feel like it's trusting your abilities. You, you do have that ability and that's really special. Um, use it to your advantage. Don't take advantage of it, but use it to your advantage. It's almost like you were a personal lie detector. <laughs> um, and that's gonna help you dodge some bullets in, in the future for sure. And finally, with Pluto, Pluto is all about our shadow self. These are the things, the skeletons in our closet, the things that we don't always want to face, but they are there. Um, and for Pluto, let's do the flowers from the dead oracle. We have armadillo, protection and boundaries. You are a very secretive and protective person. There are areas to yourself that you don't like. Um, there's stuff from your past I feel it has that has to do also with why you have so much difficulty with love. Um, but I feel like the armadillo is saying um, you're very protective of this area of yourself. It's not meant for everybody to know, so I won't tap into it deeper. Um, hopefully we can look into this more in another session together. Um, but there are definitely some things in there that I feel is they have long um, overstayed their welcome. And I feel like it's time for you to do that whole process of cleaning it out. So we could do this together um, in another session if you like. But there are some stuff in there that I feel need to come out. And it's in order to make room for a lot of this other stuff to come through. So process of healing is definitely upon you. But you're very protective of yourself in that area. Um... So anyways, this concludes your Planetary Awareness reading. Thank you so much for allowing me to read for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And anyone who's watching, if you are interested in this reading, it is available in the shop. It's one of my favorites. I hope you guys loved it. Um, I'll leave a list of the cards that I used below as well as the link to my shop. So check me out and I will see you guys later. Bye loves.